12. He disappoints the device of the crafty. So that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Can you imagine someone so wicked that he's actually enterprising in his wickedness? Huh? And the Lord said, he will disappoint their devices. Whatever device they have planned to try and stop the blessings without number, God will disappoint it. They are crafty, but God will disappoint their craftiness. And whatever enterprise they want to perform that is not of God is coming down. I said it's coming down. You have never met wicked people. Thank God that even when you meet them, God will disappoint their devices. Whatever device has been, has been set against you, whatever device has been set against us, the crafty man, can you imagine, do you know what it means to be crafty? The guy is wicked and handy with his wickedness. He's a professional with wickedness. Huh? But he says, God says, he will disappoint. This is the beauty. So when you see the wicked, don't cry and start running, calling up the pastor's number. No. Understand, remember what the end of the wicked will be. Huh? If there is something that needs the pastor's at attention, before you get onto it, the man, the man or the woman of God will have prayed over it. He will disappoint it. So that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Verse 13. He takes the wise in their own craftiness. And the counsel of the fraud is carried, uh, is, is carried headlong. Every wicked counsel will not prosper against you in this season. Every wicked plan will not prosper against you in this season. Your business will be secure because God fights for you. Your life is sure because God is your insurance. He said the blessings will be without number. Without number. You know, I read Deuteronomy 1.11 and I thought, wow, this is beautiful. Put it up. Then I read Job chapter 5 and I said, wow, this is another level altogether. So, you see, in God, the level you believe him for is the level he will give you. Look, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 11. He said, the Lord, the God of, our, of your fathers, make you a thousand times so many more as you are and bless you as he has promised. A thousand times is a number. It's a number. It's a thousand, but it's still a number. But Job, Job, he just took it to another level. And he said, let's go back there. Bearing that in mind. He said, as for me, no, verse number nine. Verse number nine, come on. Who does great and unsearchable? Things, marvelous things without number. So if you believe God for a thousand times more, God will give you a thousand times more. But it's limited. The Bible says, for with God all things are possible. I, I'm, I'm trying to set up the whole congregation for the next level because whether you're ready for the next level or not, the next level is coming. It will be up to you to fit into what God is saying. Yeah? So that you're not left behind. You know, I don't watch movies like Left Behind because I won't be left behind. Huh? So he says, he will do great and unsearchable things. Marvelous things without number. This is that season where God will begin to do things that you won't even count. I lost count. You will count your first million your first billion, your first trillion, and then they'll ask you, how much are you worth? You say, eh, I say, I lost number. I lost count. Huh? I lost count. 
You go and ask Baharisa to count the number of cars and trucks he has. If he will give you the number. I don't know if he knows how many cars. Every after five cars, please count. Every after five or six cars at random, the seventh is Baharisa's. Try. I've done that for years. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Every one, two, three, four, five, the sixth is Baharisa's. So when God says he's going to do great and unsearchable things, marvelous things without number, you better believe, begin to believe God that your blessing has no number tied to it. It's too quiet in this Catholic church. Blessings without number. This is the word we are going with. That the Lord will bless us without number. If I ask Oscar, how much does your account have? He's going to give me a number. I, I want him to bite his tongue while trying to tell me numbers. Huh? Oscar runs the account of the ministry. Huh? He's, he's, he's going to, in fact, right now if I ask Oscar, how much money do, do we have as a ministry? He will tell me the number so fast. It will be done with, in less than a second. It will be done. I, I want him to take time. Let him bite his tongue and say, Kwa kweli, my calculator just says E. Huh? You try to calculate the number, it just brings a default number. Huh? Glory to God. I want us to believe this word. And I pray that in this season, this will be the word that will manifest in your life. That you will see blessing after blessing, blessing after blessing, marvelous thing after marvelous thing, marvelous thing after marvelous thing, until you cannot count it. Amen. Your man is lame. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Is there anybody who can dare believe God to the point that God... You know, there is something about believing God. That God will skip over 1,000 people just to reach that little small girl believing God. Amen. Something about believing God that begins to change the person's situation. From poverty and a poor mentality to sit in a council of men that make the decision of how things happen. You see, this season, God will make you a principality. Woo! Amen. That's exactly what he said. You're shouting now. The Bible says it. He said he sets them to sit with princesses. A prince is a principality. Yes. Jesus. Pastor see how do you pastor this church? Uh. Glory to God. Amen. He raises them to sit with princesses. That means God will make you a principality in your own right. Amen. I know, I know you, you, you think the only principalities that exist are demons. Huh? Hello? Where is the praise team going? Who told you to go? Come back here. Who told you to go? We are only beginning. <laughs> Glory to God. The only the demons are not the only principalities that exist. There are tables for decision makers. You should believe God to be one of them. Amen. Do you know the reason why your prayer requests are too many? Because you don't make the decisions. In your office, when the council sits, you come and say, Pastor, they are seated. <laughs> they are seated. Why are you not in there? He lifts up the man. He lifts up. What part of it don't you? He lifts up. When the council is sitting, tell yourself, I am going to be part of the council. He makes them to sit and inherit a seat of honor and glory. Amen. 
Do you know those that inherit the, the throne of glory and the seat of glory and on the seat where you sit is where you eat. Ah, okay. I'm trying, I'm trying. The number is up now. Look. If you were sitting on the table of decision makers, you'd not bring a prayer request to the pastor. You'd say, you know what, pastor? Yeah. You'd say, pastor, you know what? Just pray for wisdom, nothing else. <laughs> but now you, you come with the pastor and you're gro- to the pastor and you're groaning. You want the pastor to begin to fast there and then. I say, God, funga omba kila kitu. Huh? Why are you not believing God for that? Because he says he makes them to sit with nobles. Where do you want to sit? You need to be the next decision maker. You need to be the next consultant. They need to ask your input. In that bank, in that hospital, in that place, they need to ask your input and say, we cannot do this without sister so and so. We cannot do this without brother so and so. So what do you think we should do? Then you tell them, sit down. And you begin to unearth what the Lord has placed on you in your spirit. And tell them, the way I see it, if you go this side, you're going to miss God. If we go this side, this is how we're going to gain the victory. And they say, we hear you. And let the wicked swallow his pride there. Eh? If you don't sit with us on the seat of honor, don't think for a moment Haji Suleiman is going to get born again. Haji Suleiman needs a testimony. He's not just going to come. He has a place he goes. He needs to prove that where he goes is less, is inferior. If he thinks that the place he goes is superior, you cannot tell him about Jesus. You haven't earned the right to speak I don't know who I'm talking to in this place. But I think I'm preaching to to get up to my kind of people. Haji Muhammad. Eh? Do you know why the Hajis are marrying our girls? There is no testimony. Eh? There has to be a power to set you apart. So that when Haji Muhammad comes and uh, tells you something contrary, you look, give him one good look and he understands what you're saying. But if it is the Haji so and so sitting, I have no problem against the Hajis, you know, I have no problem with it. But if it's the Haji sitting and making decisions on your behalf, and then he comes and says, tonight I am with you, you're not going to refuse. You're going to be like, this pastor doesn't know what I'm going through. So let me go with the Hajj. Hello. You must sit on the seat. Because God has volunteered to lift up. Why are you not volunteering to be lifted? I am only asking a question. You must desire to be lifted. So that God can look at you and begin to make you fit in the seat. You must want it. Expectation is the breeding ground for the miraculous. What you expect, God will bring to you. What you honor, God will give you. There is a different, do you know? You could live in this Dar Islam and find out there are guys living in this Dar Islam and it's a completely different, different world. You ask yourself, my God, those are living, we are existing, but I refuse to exist. I refuse to exist. I am not a stone. I am, no, I must carry the mantle of God in my generation. His glory must be seen upon me no excuse 
God has volunteered to lift up, to raise up. And he doesn't even care your current situation. He took it to the lowest and said, even the poor qualify. He said, even those that live in the dusty place like Makongo, they qualify. I'm just saying. Dust. 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 Can you imagine dust made it in the Bible? Dust. Huh? Dust. Dust, that word made it in the Bible. Huh? God has volunteered to lift up everybody. So you can say, oh, you know, the man said, the Lord came and asked him, would you want to be healed? He said, every time I try to jump in, somebody jumps in before me. The Lord asked him, do you want it? Do you want it? And he's giving excuses. Time up for excuses. Do, do you want to, do you want the business? There are too many witches in there. Every time I try, every time I try. When will it be your turn if you're always postponing your business, your, your, your opportunity? God wants to do it. You want to give it away. You give it to the witches. You give it to the wrong people and say, these guys are so wicked, they can even kill you. A wicked man is wicked. Don't even explain how wicked he is. He's wicked. A wicked man can do anything, even when he's weak. You know, wicked men are weak, weak in the Lord. Hello? There, he said he wants to make them not one, that's, that's plural right there. Make them sit with nobles. That's where decisions are made. Look, decisions are not made anywhere. Huh? Decisions are not made in Manzese. Huh? No! You won't even find the decision makers there. Decision makers live in... Uh, Masaki, Oster Bay, you know, what Bari Beach, you know, there. Eh, eh. Guys. Huh? Look, the mathematics is simple. I need to sit down. The mathematics is simple. Don't complicate it. You have an opportunity to believe God for anything and God will make you whatever you have believed him for. You have God's word that guarantees you that God will take you there. Now, when there is no ambition to become anything, there will not be a fulfillment of anything because the people are not believing God to move anywhere. They are satisfied with status quo, the state of things as they are. So the only thing that will happen is they will zero grace. They'll just move around and move around and they make a circle. Then they com complain. I say, how viongozi bana? Where is kuwaji? Kwa nini we siyo kiongozi? Kwa ni who refused? <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody is saying to some man, no, no, I'm, I am for you. <laughs> I am for you. Glory to God. The seat of honor and glory is preserved for kingdom-minded minded people. The Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. That means whatever nation you are, whether it's, uh, it's uh, uh, that office, that's your nation right there. Um, that house, that place, that small, that, he says, what will exalt it is righteousness. Then he says, sin is a reproach to any people. And you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Have you read that scripture? Yeah. Huh? 2 Corinthians 5.21 You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, Proverbs 14, what? 20 what? Proverbs 14 something. It's, it's 23. Righteousness exalts a nation. 
So God wants to exalt you to the point that you are part of the decision makers where you sit with nobles to decide the future of the company, to decide the next level of the, of the place. Whatever is going to happen, you're a sharer. Your prayers will be different. The way you look at things will be different. You'll not be worrying about who they cut off because if you're part of the decision makers, you decide who gets cut. You don't worry about being cut. Huh? You decide, and because you're all there, you can argue your point and bring forth your strong reasons and say, no, this thing ought not to be. But you always wait. You are on the other side of the receivers. Always receiving what you are told, which is not bad if it's okay. But if it is against your very progress, then you must step up to another level. Hello? But you say, how? By the same grace, by the same Holy Spirit. You need to first of all believe it. You need to receive it. You need to, you need to begin to see yourself that way. These places are not reserved for some people more than others. Huh? This is where God has called you. This is why God brings you here. God brings you for a training. God brings you for a preparation so that your mindset can be different. Has he not said that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither, neither has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him and God has revealed these things to us by his spirit and the spirit such as all things here, yeah, even the deep things of God, the deep things, can you imagine? God has deep things for the people which takes the spirit to search them out and reveal them to those people. Now, when those people don't understand who the spirit is, they miss the deep things. And these deep things, no eye has seen them yet. They are ideas and their creations and their, their, their wisdoms, understandings, ways of doing things that your office doesn't yet know about. And when God looks at you, it is you he wants to bring it through. But now because you have no understanding of it, The other kingdom decides to unleash theirs through the Hajj, and you can't resist it. I, I like a couple of things that God is doing in this house. It it's going to increase, and that's what I'm here to announce. Amen. Huh? Amen. If there is comedy, this house must be on top of it. Yes. And we on top of it? It's down there, we are up here. And it's from this house. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Huh? Anything that this city is doing, we must be on top of it. Amen. Amen. So, we are going to begin to see businesses that dominate the city. Amen. We are going to begin to see uh, ideas that dominate the city from inside this house. Amen. We are going to begin to see... Um, uh, Creativity that dominates the city from this house. Amen. I know some of you are like, I think he's talking to my neighbor. No, I'm talking to you. Hello. Anything you do from now onwards is going to reveal the glory of God. Amen. We cannot be at the level of I think there's a curse working in my family. And you have been a member of this church for more than three months. Huh? We are not at the level of curse. We are at the level of blessings. Huh? Have you ever had any of these pastors call you and say, you know, I think there's a, you know, something in your family. You must bring an offering of 11 million so we can take it out. Have you ever seen that happen? No. We don't trade in curses. We trade in blessings. That's why we're not... You are so excited going to churches that teach you about curses. The 11 things about generational curses. And you're there writing. What are you writing? What are you writing? 
the 10 things you must know about your great grandfather. So now this preacher knows your great grandfather who even your grandfather did not see. We don't trade in curses, we trade in blessings. So if you came here hoping that the pastor is going to tell you about the five things, the five meanings of a cut when it passes by your door, you're out of order. Huh? The three things that a kunguru will do when it passes over. And you're there trying to write notes. The reason why your eye is twitching. No, there are higher things. There are higher levels. Come on, someone say glory to God. Glory to God. I'm done. Yeah, take over your